So I just had to pull off all the injector system off the inlet manifold, throttle body um, injectors, the rail, a lot because um, looks like we split a uh, O-ring that went onto the injector. You can see I've done a boost lease test and it's leaking out of here. So you can see where it's been painted and obviously when it mixes with fuel, the atom atomization burns off the paint because uh, fuel will just melt off paint. We've only got it on number two cylinder, but I'm gonna replace all of these O-rings because I don't want this happening again. So I've just bought some brand new ones and we're gonna fit them on. So you can see here, this is the brand new ones that I've got. They're the same as the Cosworth injectors. So I just get them off of there because they're a lot cheaper than getting them from Vauxhall. This is the one I've just removed. Um, and at first glance, it actually looks fine, which is why obviously it stayed on there. You can see there's a tiny little mark there trying to focus in there but when you deform this you can see that the rubber's perished so it's hard to tell when it's actually on the injector but the rubber's actually perished so it weren't long before that's going to split you can see there there's a split in it already and that was going to fail very soon anyway so got some nice fresh ones to go on there now so as you can see there's no need to take the actual rail off of its uh fuel lines because you can just spill fuel everywhere and it just makes a mess there's no need so you can just take them off you can see the good thing is picking up a couple of little damaged they always tend to get damaged when they go into these eds manifolds um the stock manifolds don't cause any sort of problems but the eds ones just seem to always damage the um o-rings and you don't really know till you've done a boost test or they blow out so it's going to change them out but also what we've got to do is the Sophia has picked up a misfire um, just to, it needs a set of plugs in it um, the plugs hadn't been changed for a while it also the EML lights come on and flashed off again it's gone off again now but I want to do a, a data log and just check why that's come on because whatever the problem is I want to sort it what I tend to do is I put a little bit of lubricant around the rubber seals and down into the injector hole just so that this slides in nicely without tearing up the seals Right, back together and final boost leak check and no noise. Now you can tell it's still pressurized because if I take off the vacuum hose, so you can hear there's loads of boost pressure in there. Zero vacuum leaks now, spot on. So all that boost is gonna be going into the engine and making power. So obviously the Sophia is a completely different car, completely stock, even got the crossover pipe still over it. So let's get all that off, get this uh, plug cover off, get the coil pack out and check these plugs out. So the spark plug I'm using for the Sephira, I won't use anything else now other than Iridium's. Um, a lot of people go with the PFRB 6GT plug, I think it is, that the VXR run, which are actually priced more than this, and they're platinum, they're double platinum. Um, but there is no better conductor for spark plugs um, unless you're going stupid high-end, like top fuel drag cars, than Iridium's. Um, and they last so, so long without being changed. Um, Platinums were great back in the day, but Iridiums have took over, and I use sevens in pretty much everything. You can use a six in a stock car, but the reason I use sevens is because I've always got them in stock, because I use sevens and eights in all the cars that I build, because anything over 300 horsepower, if you ain't using a grade seven plug, you're mad. Um, a lot of people don't understand the grades of plugs. If you have, say, a, a too hot a grade of plug, you're going to get detonation. Um, if you have a too cold a grade of plug for too low a heat, then you, the plug's not going to be able to clean itself. Um, I could go into a massive detail about it, but trust me, do not be using a grade 6 plug anywhere near 300 plus horsepower. Um, I'll go into that in a lot more detail in the future. So I've just pulled the plugs out of it. Um, they seem to be burning pretty well. A little bit lean, if anything. But the problem is with a stock map is they do run lean. And if you run them on crappy fuel, that's why you get a lot of the pistons that are covered in debt. And that's why they can melt. It's not really down to the engine itself. It's the, the standard map is a lean burn map. And that's why you can get such good fuel economy out of them. But if you don't use the right plugs, the right um, fueling, you will get debt all over your pistons. Right, so let's just quickly touch on spark plug gaps. So out of the factory, out of the box, these will come at a 0.8 of a millimeter spark plug gap. So you can see what I mean, between the electrode and the tip, that will be 0.8 of a millimeter. Now the maximum that I would ever go down to, maybe on a 600 horsepower car, but I've never had to do it because the spark um, system that I've been running is way, way good enough, is a 0.6 of a millimeter. But with these cars, 
probably the bare minimum that I would like to get away with 0.7 of a millimeter. Um, anything less than that, you have a problem with your sparking system. So as long as you're running a good coil pack on these cars, you can run these at 0.8 of a millimeter and have no misfires. Uh, 25 PSI I've run out of them and there's been no problems. So if you are having to drop down your spark plug gap to uh, stop the spark plug blowing out, then you basically haven't got a strong enough spark. Right, so a quick little tip when it comes to doing these spark plugs up. Um, the reason you see cracks all the time in the Z20 LET and the Z20 LEH head is because these spark plugs have been done up too tight. Do them up to 25 newton meters and you will never have a problem. Right, so she's all back together. Check the water, check the oil, everything's spot on. So we're gonna go inside the car now and we're gonna plug the opcom in because we've got a slight issue with the EML light coming on the dash intermittently. Um, so I haven't checked it yet. So I'm gonna plug it in. Got a good old Cosworth on the uh, laptop. Right, so these are the two codes that are coming up. Very simple to sort. The fuel trim is probably down to the spark plugs anyway. Just the issue with emissions. The fact that this has got a decat as well. So we're going to uh, check that out. Check what it's doing. Uh, I'm going to do a live data on it and I'll be able to see exactly what's happening. So I've erased all the codes now. Um, you can see long term fuel trim is absolutely spot on. Minus one, there's no problem with that and even short term fuel trim now is spot on so obviously the plugs were causing an issue with the fuel trim the o2 sensors were uh, working out that the uh, spark plugs obviously weren't burning the fuel properly so i've seen a lot of people commenting in the comment section about this car um it's obviously a fiesta rs turbo but the problem is it's a ford now we all know that fords they rot inside out if i get this car out it's going to be a project i've got other cars to finish it first this is going to be the last one um, it'll probably be done over the winter time at the minute I want to enjoy the cars uh, for now I'm going to start it up give it a six month start it hasn't been starting in six months as I say just put some petrol in it um, mechanically absolutely mint runs mint the engine's not done a mile on the road the clutch not done a mile on the road nor is the rebuilt gearbox um, the whole thing's sweet but the problem is the body you know if I get this up in the air I know it's going to have rust all over the floor pans I've just come off of doing um, the white RS turbo and you see how much rust was on that um, this is probably the same if not worse I don't know yet until I get it apart so you're gonna have to wait for this car till I don't know over the winter and then I'll get it stripped apart but at a minute as you can see the uh, Astra is in the way of this anyway the red GSI so I'm gonna start out for you I'll let you hear some noise get up to temperature so the oil pressures and that up obviously at the minute it's just a barn find you can see all the dust and everything on the roof so let's give it a quick warm up, get some of that good mongoose noise. Sticking the battery on it now, because obviously the battery on it that was down there is absolutely toast. So uh, like interior wise and that, this car's pretty sweet. You can see uh, it's got a mint steering wheel. The car is absolutely mint. Carpet's all mint. Dash is all mint. Everything's mint inside here. Um, just needs a clean up really, proper clean up. And then the body done, obviously a lot of rust is gonna have to be sorted out on it. So that's quite quiet tonight. So I think the 
we'll go for a little boost. I'm trying to show you the acceleration uh, from second gear with this turbo on. Obviously, it's not matte. The AFRs are really rich at the minute, so that's going to be a lot quicker. Uh, it's only holding around 16 psi. It's going to be up to around 24 psi when it's all matte. So we're out doing a little bit of late night boosting, get you some video clips, some uh, point of view driving clips. One thing I've noticed without having them bonnet raisers on the back, the amount of heat build up in this engine bay, fans don't want to go off. So gonna get these bonnet raisers back on the back, let all that heat out the back. Really need some bonnet vents on this car as well. So since I've bled the brakes, um, got all the air out of the system, the new lines and everything, the brakes are as sharp as hell now. So I'm gonna get some proper race pads for the front um, just to give it to extra grip. But even now the ABS pump's complaining about how heavy the braking is. The only thing I'm uh, not happy with is the rear beam's not getting controlled very well by the new coilovers that are on, the new gas coilovers. I'm gonna go back to the um, shocks and springs setup, the competition set. Uh, over very, very, very heavy bumps, you can see it scrubs up in the arch, which it should never be doing. Um, they're just not controlling it. Never done it on my old setup, so gonna be changing them back. I've just gotta get them shocks refurbished or try and buy some brand new ones. So you can see the big old, uh, brakes doing their job nice and shiny uh, there should be I'm gonna get some proper pads inside these Brembo's um, when I'm on track I want to be throwing myself through the windscreen when I'm doing some heavy braking not gonna be able to do them on these tires as well these 88 R's um, as much as they are supposed to be a track tire they're basically a road tire there's no way you can do any of the sort of stuff that you can do with a triple eight or an AR1 so we're over one of my favorite little spots just because in the background at night you get some great pictures and you've got this light above it here and it gives you some uh, great lighting on the cars, especially silver cars. I want to show you a comparison between the KO6 and the KO4 um, and how well the KO6 actually spools up and pulls. Um, this car is really only running around 15, 16 PSI at the minute and the AFRs are really rich on this map. So uh, with the new cam set up and the new fuel system, it's, it's be expected. But when it's all mapped, 24 PSI, um, it's really gonna pull well. 